Today on Cooking for Wellness, we're prepping for Thanksgiving with an easy turkey brine. So stick around and let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Cooking for Wellness at NYU Langone Health. It is November, the days are getting shorter and everyone is preparing for the holiday season. Thanksgiving is a wonderful holiday because all Americans can celebrate no matter their background. For many people, it means getting together with close friends and family to share a meal. We also realize for most, it can meet a great deal of pressure to perform in the kitchen. So we understand this and we wanna help. Last November, we shared three of our favorite Thanksgiving recipes, which we reposted on Inside Health. This year, we wanted to tackle the most difficult item of all, the turkey. Cooking a large piece of meat is definitely one of the more difficult things to do in the kitchen. The consequences are high because if it ends up too dry, too salty, or you burn it, there's, there's very little you can do to recover. There's more than one way to cook a turkey, but today we're gonna show you a very simple and easy way to prepare delicious turkey with confidence. So let's get started. I believe the most important step in preparing poultry is the brine. So some people use a dry rub, but I feel an overnight wet brine is the best way to get a flavorful, tender and juicy bird. Good brine will also help the skin crisp up nicely and enables the bird to cook evenly and more quickly. The first thing you need to do is find a container that's large enough to fully submerge your turkey. I usually use a small cooler, that way you can add some ice and not refrigerate it. To prepare the brine, we're simply going to whisk together two cups of kosher salt, two cups of light brown sugar. We have a bunch of sh whole shallots that we simply just quartered. Some garlic cloves, just put the garlic cloves down on the cutting board and just lightly crush them with the side of the knife. Have two couple tablespoons of black peppercorns and a couple tablespoons of juniper berries. Some fresh bay leaves. And we have a, a bunch of fresh herbs, rosemary, thyme, and sage. But we're gonna put that in right at the end after we try to whisk it in. So we're taking a gallon of apple cider. I mean, it's cider season, and it's just absolutely delicious right now. So often a recipe will call for cooking a brine which, you know, heating it up to thoroughly dissolve the sugar and salt, but then you have to re-chill it, and it's an extra step. As long as you have a good whisk, you can do it without cooking. And I also have a gallon of uh, water. We combine the ingredients the best we can. The cider adds, you know, the flavor and the deep complexity of the apple flavor, but it also has a ton of sugar. So it sweetens the meat, and it also makes the skin a lot darker and crispier. So you have to be careful when you're cooking the oven. So we add our fresh herbs and we're basically good to go. So in order to get your turkey ready to go into the brine, first of all, you need to make sure it's defrosted. So this can actually be a little bit more complicated than you think. So this literally took almost four days in the refrigerator to defrost. I mean, can you thought on the counter? Of course. It just introduces a little bit of extra risk of foodborne illness. So you always want to thaw in the refrigerator if possible. So we're taking out the uh, organs. Will normally be bagged inside the cavity of the bird. I mean, a lot of people are maybe squeamish or not feel good about this, but this is great for making your gravy. So you want to pull that out of the bird and just reserve it for gravies and stocks. All right, and into the brine we go. Okay, we're gonna let this sit overnight. Okay, so our bird has been brining since last night, uh, almost 14 hours. We're ready to get it ready for the cooking process. So, yes, cooking stuffing inside the bird, it comes out delicious. The one dilemma is, you know, you still have to cook out the potential salmonella. So we gotta get over 165 degrees. So what happens if you put the stuffing inside the bird, you need to get that internal temp all the way up there. And I feel like it, it tends to dry the turkey out. So I've kind of stopped stuffing the turkeys now. What I do like to do is, because you do need to fill the cavity so it cooks evenly, we use uh, some local apples and onions and more fresh herbs. You just fill it up. So we're just gonna literally just jam it in there 
The apples and the onions will flavor the turkey and help it cook evenly. So we talked about the stuffing. We prefer today to just fill up the cavity so it cooks evenly, but we're not gonna actually do our stuff. We're gonna do our stuffing on the side. So you're cooking a bird this size. You need to make sure essentially all the extremities are pulled into the body so it cooks evenly. Because if you leave it like this, what will happen is the tips of the, of the wings and the tips of the legs will end up burning way before the, you know, the internal cavity gets up to temperature. First, I'm gonna tuck the wing tips in to prevent them from burning. So when you truss or tie up uh, a chicken, you usually do the entire bird. For a turkey, you basically just need to do the legs. So we take you know, a normal butcher's twine and we simply wrap the legs as tightly together as we can. Keep everything nice and tight and together. Also, being in the brine overnight, it sucks in a lot of moisture. It's really important to let the bird dry before you go into the oven. So if you do have the option to let it sit and just air dry for an hour, that's excellent. Otherwise, literally towel dry. You don't want any extra steam in the oven because that leads to softer skin and we want crispy skin. So I usually take a little bit of olive oil. Some people say butter or chicken fat also works great. Butter is fine, but it needs to be clarified because if you use whole butter, you end up with uh, splotchy spots on the skin from the, the milk solids. So just give a little oil and you wanna just lightly season the outside with a little bit of salt and pepper. The salt helps it render. Once again, this is more to crisp up the skin. Take some of those herbs from the brine and fill in that cavity with the herbs as well. Can't go wrong with fresh herbs. Okay, so our turkey is oiled up, salt and peppered, stuffed with the herbs and the onions and the apples. We're ready to go into the oven. So remember the oven was preheated to 300 degrees. I would probably say at this point, that one of the most important things is having a oven rack because this allows the heat and air to circulate in the oven. If you put, you know, a lot of people are gonna put a turkey, sometimes I'll put some additional like uh, carrots, parsnips, vegetables, but that's at the end. You don't want that in the beginning. You don't want that added moisture. Once again, you want this bird with air circulating around the entire, because that's how you get a nice brown skin on it. So we're ready to go into the oven. Okay, so our turkey is out. So, very important. Uh, they say 300, 325 degrees, about 15 minutes a pound. And like, it, it's not an exact science, but it's more or less um, accurate. And also, for planning purposes, you're gonna shoot for about one to one and a half pounds per guest. So, 10 guests coming, go for the 14 to 16 pound turkey. That's how you'll see it at the grocery store. I know putting the whole bird on, on a beautiful set table, it looks beautiful. It's unfortunately, it's extremely un, impractical and it's very difficult to cut. I like to stay in the kitchen. I like to break it down, remove the legs, take the breast off the, off the body and slice it and just prepare a platter. That's the, I feel like it's the best, uh, best presentation, safest way to do it. And you just get the best results, frankly major, major uh, thing to remember. The turkey comes out of the oven, you need to let it sit at least 30 to 45 minutes. The juices get very aggressive and moving around the bird. It needs to calm, relax, and actually soak back into the meat. And it also continues to carry over cook. So you'll sometimes get, you know, up to seven, possibly even 10 degrees sitting on the counter. It'll keep rising in temperature because it's so, so big and intact. Okay, so our bird has now been resting for almost 40 minutes. We are ready to carve. First thing I do is cut that string that we did. You're gonna go right along as close to the breast as you can. And you're gonna just gently try to slice and pull the leg gently, trying not to tear the skin, keep it intact. So as you, you slice down and you, you try to pry the leg off of the body, you'll actually see the leg joint. You can slice right in the center of the wing. Take the tips right off. People forget turkey wings. It's a real concentration of flavor because they're so small, but they can be really delicious. Okay, now we're onto the breast. 
So you want to feel for that breastplate bone running dead center down the middle. You want to get as close to the left side of it as you possibly can and just gently go down the side, slowly. If you, you're too aggressive doing this, you leave a lot of extra meat on the bone and essentially you don't want to waste any bit of that meat. Having that breast intact and whole and sitting on the cutting board makes for very, very safe and easy slicing. Delicious. Okay, so there you have it. Simple, easy, approachable way to cook a turkey with confidence. You may have also been hearing a lot about uh, turkey shortages on the news. I would advise you, while you have a chance, just get out there, get ahead of it, and order yours as soon as you can. Thank you for watching. Check out more episodes on the NYU Langone Health YouTube channel. Have a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving.